This video is going to show you the basic structure of a JavaScript um, function so that you can program all sorts of things within JavaScript. So, the basic structure within JavaScript works in a function and then it's got a squirrely brace and a closing squirrely brace. Now, squirrely braces are in JavaScript what the begin and the end is in SQL. So that is where it starts with. Okay. So your function will probably have a name. You say that it's my function name, and let's just take that out there. And you can add some parameters in if you want to. That needs to be sent through to this function. Okay, within your function, then you will have your lines of code, and they're all separated by a semicolon. In JavaScript, you have to specify a semicolon. Another thing to note in JavaScript is that all the names in JavaScript are case-sensitive. So, um, name and name and name are all different variables according to JavaScript. Everything is case-sensitive within JavaScript. Now, if you write a script, you can put things within functions and you could put things outside of functions. So, if we were to bring that down, and have our function name some variables if I want them starting there but over here I've got some instructions what that means is these instructions at the top outside of functions will run immediately as soon as, I, as uh, the browser sees the script it'll run immediately and it'll run once only so it'll run through it and then it's done once the page loads, it's there, or when the JavaScript loads in an Ajax environment, it will run and, it was, and it's done. Anything within a function will not run when you start your JavaScript. So when you load your JavaScript, this function will not run, but it will only run when this function is called. And you can call it multiple times. So if you call this function by clicking on a button, it will call every time you click on a button, it will run this JavaScript functions. Now. Within JavaScript, you have to declare every variable before you use it. So I have to specify a variable, and this is my variable that's specified for, and it's all small letters by the way, um, B, and specify my variable like that. Now you notice that I haven't specified a type. In JavaScript, you do not specify types. You can, but you don't. You don't need to. Because JavaScript is clever enough to know what this type is. Any, type, any variable in JavaScript is an object and it can be any type. I can make this and add it, make it a string. So I can say this equals hello. And then right there after I can say b equals 2. So what it'll do is, yeah, it'll be a string, and then it's a, oh, it's an integer, and it'll change it to a type of an integer on the fly as you use it. Another thing to remember that all variables in JavaScript is within a specific scope. So if I specify a variable, let's make that variable b over there. Let's make that variable b equals 25. And there I'm saying variable b equals hello. That basically means when I'm not in this function, b will have the variable of 25, or value of 25. When I'm in this function, b will have the value of hello. So if I have another function over here, um, b value, and I will say a equals b in here, a will get the value of 25 every time I call this function, because that's the outside scope of B. B is within the scope here, so only within this function, once it reaches the end of the squirrely brace, that B value will disappear and will revert to the other one. Okay, so that is the scope of variables. Now, if we look a little bit about logic within JavaScript, so if we have a look at lo logic in JavaScript, so I've got my function, Let's call it B value. Okay, so now I want to compare two values to each other. Now, 
in SQL and other languages it's not that strict in the formatting in JavaScript it's extremely strict in how you format an if statement so you have to specify if and whatever logic you have must be within round braces and then afterwards if I've got any values that I want to or for instructions that I want to add in I do it with two if there's more than one I do it between a squirrely brace again so begin and end and if I want to say if it's not true so else then I can do else and do my instructions for what must happen afterwards as well now something to remember that if I do not have more than one instruction I can actually leave the squirrely braces out so I can say um, if a equals b I can have instruction 1 else instruction 2 remember the semicolon because the instruction still needs to end with a semicolon before your else okay so you can do it that way now you've seen that I've done something funny here when it comes to the compare, compare um, instruction so let's have a look at a bit of the logic instructions within JavaScript now the language JavaScript is based on C so the C language is very strict or is, is very particular when it comes to logical compare and those type of things so within JavaScript if I use the equals it makes A the value of B so A becomes the value of B if I say A equals equals B it basically gives me an answer of true or false it says if A equals to B so that makes the value and that, set, or that sets the value and that checks the value so that's how these two work now if I want to see something that is not equal to something else I will be A not equals to B in SQL you use the greater than bigger larger than in JavaScript that is not the best way to do it so it's not equals to B so that's how you compare it so if I were to say if A equals B then it's always going to be true because A and B will be equal because I'm setting A equal to B so when I do want to do an if statement I always have to use a double equals to compare the two or a not equals okay so that is the first part of an if now what if I want to combine if I want to say this equals that and the next one equals the other one then I have to combine it within brackets so I need to say if a equals to b ampersand ampersand that again double means it's comparing or it's, it's an and this one logical and that one C equals D close the bracket so that's an and so I must say this is true and that is true so that gives me a logical value if I were to use a single and so A and B it will actually not compare the two values it will do a bitwise and on that which is a mathematical function in um, binary, binary logic so you don't want to do that now that is an and or if you want to know if something is not something else so you can always say if it is not a equals to b so you can put a not in front of it so that'll and again it'll be in brackets so what it'll do in this case it'll check if a equals to b give it true or false not will swap it around so you can even have that as um, greater than and equals to so not greater than and equals to is actually a less than so it will first compare that part so if it's a greater than or equal to b true or false and let's say it's true then the not will make it false if it's false the not will make it true the other one you can use in here is if I want to say if it is a equals b or c equals d the or comparison is basically two part characters that will say A equals B or C equals D and then whatever comes thereafter the next one that you might want to use is if you want to use a loop within JavaScript so if you want to use a fixed loop so it's a four specific it needs to count from one two three four five 
So then you will use the for loop. So I need to be for, and then I have to have a value. So I'm going to say, let's call it i. Um, where does it start? So i starts at 0. Remember that I need to declare the i before I can actually use it. So i equals 0. The second part of this for is when must it end. So I need to say i less than 10. So what it's going to do, it's going to start with i 0, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then it's going to stop. So i is less than 10. And then I need to say, how is it going to increment? How is it going to go? How is it going to change? So what I usually say here is i plus plus. That's an i plus plus. So what i plus plus means is add one on. So i is e that or that instruction there is the same as saying i equals i plus one. So i plus plus is exactly the same as that. If I want to say okay, let's go from ten down to zero so start with 10 and while i is greater than zero so we've got 10 9 8 7 6 until it is one because it won't go to zero then i will have that as i minus minus so basically the i will be reducing at the end of it and then i'll have my instructions as what to do with i inside of that loop so that is my for and next loop and the next one you can do is a while loop. So there I can do it the same as in any other side. I can say while and then say A is less than B, start, end. And then remember that you just need to have to uh, make sure that there's some instruction that's going to get out of this loop so it doesn't go into a continuous loop. Your browser will carry on forever until you actually close that page if that is what's happening. So that is your normal while instruction with whatever logical condition you want in the top there. And that is the basics of JavaScript structure.